Good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayer. It's Thursday the 28th of October and today the church celebrates the apostles Simon and Jude. And I've just realised I'm at the end of the PowerPoint instead of the beginning. Excuse me. Yeah. So a little bit of information about Simon and Jude, named among the twelve apostles in three of the gospels, the synoptic gospels, Simon the Zealot, belonging to a nationalist resistance movement opposing the Roman occupation. And Jude, described by Luke as the son of James, describes himself in his letter as the brother of James, but of course James could be father and son, could have had the same name. He appears to be the same person as Thaddeus. So he is known as by a lot of people as the patron saint of lost causes. And the two of them were joined together on this date the 28th of October because a church which had recently acquired their relics was dedicated to their memory in Rome on this day in the 7th century. So there you go there's a little bit about Luke and Jude. So let's follow their example and come before the Lord in prayer. O oh God make speed to save us O Lord, make haste to help us. There shall come forth a shoot from the rough stock of Jesse, and a small branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the flat fatling together with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 1 to 16. Happy are those whose lives are faultless, who live according to the law of the Lord. Happy are those who follow his commands, who obey him with all their heart. They never do wrong, they walk in the Lord's ways. Lord, you have given us your laws and told us to obey them faithfully. How I hope that I shall be faithful in keeping your instructions. If I pay attention to all your commands, then I will not be put to shame. As I learn your righteous judgments, I will praise you with a pure heart. I will obey your laws, never abandon them. How can young people keep their lives pure? By obeying your commands. With all my heart I try to serve you. Keep me from disobeying your commandments. I keep your law in my heart so that I will not sin against you. I praise you, Lord, 
teach me your ways. I will repeat aloud all the laws you have given. I delight in following your commands more than in having great wealth. I study your instructions. I examine your teachings. I take pleasure in your laws. Your commandments I will not forget. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3 verses 11 to 18 Then the Lord told me that even though Israel had turned away from him, she had proved to be better than unfaithful Judah. He told me to go and say to Israel, Unfaithful Israel, come back to me. I am merciful and will not be angry. I will not be angry with you forever. Only admit that you are guilty and that you have rebelled against the Lord your God. Confess that under every green tree you have given your love to foreign gods and that you have not obeyed my commands. I, the Lord, have spoken. Unfaithful people, come back. You belong to me. I will take one of you from each town and two from each clan and I will bring you back to Mount Zion. I will give you rulers who obey me and they will rule you with wisdom and understanding. Then when you have become numerous in that land, people will no longer talk about my covenant books. They will no longer think about it or remember it. They will not even need it, nor will they make one another, and nor will they make another one. When that time comes, Jerusalem will be called the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather there to worship me. They will no longer do what their stubborn and evil hearts tell them. Israel will join with Judah, and together they will come from exile in the country in the north, and will return to the land that I gave your ancestors as a permanent possession. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ was believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory. Christ Jesus was revealed in the flesh and vindicated in the spirit. He was seen by angels and proclaimed among the nations. Believed in throughout the world, he was taken up in glory. This will be made manifest at the proper time by the blessed and only Sovereign, who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light. To the King of kings and the Lord of lords, be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. Christ was believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory. Jude verses 1 to 4 and verses 17 to 25. From Jude, servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James. To those who have been called by God, who live in the love of God the Father and the protection of Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace and love be yours in full measure. My dear friends, I was doing my best to write to you about the salvation we share in common when I felt the need of writing at once to encourage you to fight on for the faith which once and for all God has given to his people. For some godless people have slipped in unnoticed among us, persons who distort the message about the grace of our God in order to excuse their immoral ways and who reject Jesus Christ, our only Master and Lord. Long ago, the scriptures predicted the condemnation they have received. But remember, my friends, what you were told in the past by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, when the last days come, people will appear who will make fun of you, people who follow their own godless desires. These are the people who cause divisions, who are controlled by their natural desires who do not have the Spirit. But you, my friends, keep on building yourselves up on the most sacred faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and keep yourselves in the love of God as you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy to give you eternal life. 
show mercy towards those who have doubts. Save others by snatching them out of the fire, and to others show mercy mixed with fear, but hate their very clothes, stained by their sinful lusts. To him who is able to keep you from falling, and to bring you faultless and joyful before his glorious presence, to the only God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, might and authority, from all ages past, and now, and for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. On the foundation stones of the heavenly city are written the names of the apostles of the Lamb. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. On the foundation stones of the heavenly city are written the names of the apostles of the Lamb. Lord, we thank you for the day that has been. We thank you for the opportunities we've had today to worship you, to gather around your table, to share with each other. Lord, we thank you for the conversations we may have had. And we reflect upon the opportunities we may have missed. We ask, Lord, that you would help us in future to be more vigilant. Lord, we pray tonight for peace in our world. As we're reminded again that being double jabbed does not stop you from contracting COVID nor stop you from spreading COVID. The UK study finds that many people who are vaccinated are catching and spreading the virus to those they live with. Father, we pray for an increased vigilance in the population. We are all tired, we've all had enough. But while the death toll continues to be present with us, because COVID is still present with us, then Lord, may we be willing to endure small inconveniences
Father, we pray for the attitudes of many people as a man is sentenced for sending emails to Angela Rayner, making threats to her and her children. Lord, although we know that this is not acceptable behaviour, yet we see so often around us similar behaviour, similar attitudes, where threats and violence and confrontation seem to be the norm. They seem to be the default that people choose to go to these days. We pray that as this case is highlighted, it may cause others to stop and think about their actions. Lord, that as a nation we would have a greater sense of peace, a greater sense of personal responsibility. That we would think twice before issuing threats. Father, we know that the internet can be a hotbed of distasteful comments and fora where people find others to bolster their own views. Their mindset becomes hardened and narrowed and somehow they become detached from reality and don't see the error of what they're doing or what they're saying or what they're writing. So Lord, we pray for peace on our social media, peace within the digital world that many of us inhabit these days. That it wouldn't be left just to legislation and companies to control but that we would as a people as a society learn self-control Father, we pray for those who tonight have been, or today, have been afflicted by heavy downpours. Know those people in Cockermouth and parts of Scotland where homes have been invaded by water once again. And as we are on the brink of the COP26 conference, Lord, we pray that the message of climate change would chime loud and clear in the ears of those who are gathered together. And that that would be an opportunity, we would seize this opportunity to make real change. and bring peace to our broken and bruised and damaged world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for individuals and their needs. We pray for the plight of Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, 
who is still imprisoned or in under house arrest at the moment but expected to be called back to prison in Iran for her husband who is staging a hunger strike outside Whitehall in an attempt to encourage the British government to do more to help his wife. Lord, we pray for all those who have concerns, who are fighting for loved ones, who are detained unfairly. For all whose loved ones are no longer seen perhaps they don't know where they are for those who have disappeared become missing persons Lord we pray that Nazamin and her husband Richard would be reunited and she would be able to see her daughter again we pray for all those in similar situations that they would be released back to their families. Lord, we pray for the people we know more intimately, friends, family, those we love. Lord, we pray that they may know your love and your peace and the salvation that you offer. We pray that in that salvation they may find all that they need. Healing, provision. But above all, Lord, the knowledge that you are God and therefore all will be well. Father, we pray for those who mourn today, thinking particularly of Linda Gardner and her family on the passing of Ollie. And all who have lost loved ones in the last 24 hours. Lord, we pray for the hope of resurrection to comfort them and be a source of solace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So join us together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen using the words that Jesus gave us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all 
evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me. Hope you have a pleasant evening. Stay warm, stay dry and stay praising God because he's worth it. Take care everyone. Bye.